Oh, hi. Welcome back to another Flip Flap Toy View where this time I'm not going to be doing any jump cuts because, well, the video is going to take pretty much a very long time to produce now because I feel like if I did so, so many jump cuts, well, that's not going to help me. But um, anyways, in this video, before I should actually start this toy view, I've got a Tokyo Metro train right over here. It's not just one, but I've also got a second one here, which actually came from the second product four or three years ago. Quite a long time they're buying these trains, though. It brings back memories, doesn't it? It certainly does. And yes, in this video, um, before I should actually... Yes, I've already said um, before I'm actually going to be starting to do some toy reviews here. Just to let you know that I'm making this video on February. And it's been like a long, long time. Now, I'm actually haven't done any videos for this month, though, because, well, I've been heavily distracted by other things along the way, though, on my PC, which is, of course, um, the computer room computer, obviously, but what's very, very strange is, is that I've been doing a whole bunch of other things. I've been doing a lot of homeschooling, which was like the number one thumbs up thing to do though, because if you don't do any homeschooling, you won't gain any confidence. The other thing here is I had to do some TikTok videos though, and um, it's pretty much a hobby though, rather than a, you know, a necessity. I've been making three more of these recently, that's pretty good for me. And I've also been playing VR Chat, which is pretty much a very cool game if you want to basically chat with other people. And it's also virtual reality. And it's the sort of game that, well, it takes place on a virtual world and pretty much has got a lot of people playing as 3D customized avatars on it, though. Particularly if you're going to make an avatar of a dead meme, which pretty much knows the way, but did not know the way and died. And obviously that was one dead me. Now obviously with this Tokyo Metro train running on the table... Oh my goodness me, I didn't know what to say because I'm swapping subjects to another one here. This one here lights at the top. Since this one here doesn't have any headlights, which have... Well, let's just say it doesn't have a light gimmick, obviously. But it does have a light gimmick on the top headlight sections here, next to where the roof is, I believe though. Or Let me just show you. If I go a bit closer here, and um, this train here has got like a light gimmicky feature on the top, which is pretty much interesting though. Here we are, can I see it? It's right on the top there, I think it is, yep. Whereas this one here, uh, lights on the headlights though, I might go ahead a bit closer here, but this time, instead of just, you know, just sitting on the floor doing some toy viewing like so, I'm actually going to stand up and just do some toy viewing because I, th I feel like it's a lot much more easy and a bit conventional in my opinion though, but um, I could say otherwise because, you know, there's lots of ways you can change different positions to review toys. And uh, I think it lights at the front rather than that and um, at the top though. But anyways, I'm going to start doing this toy view. Hopefully this video will go good though. Who knows what could possibly go wrong in this video though. Hopefully there's some... Uh, if, well, if there's any people coming inside into my room, well, I've got to start over again and that's not a very good thing to do though. But anyways, first product. This one here. Oh wow. It's pretty much something relating to Chinese in the year 2021. Oh my goodness! There's a coronavirus plot here, it's so weird, eh? Look at that, even the Chinese characters have got like... Well, I've got a funny feeling the coronavirus has got like a Chinese character for cow or ox. I think this year will be like the year of the ox. And this part of here, speaking of the year of the ox, it also really relates to what we have there. It's a five pack, and it's called the Ox and Rat Chinese Sand from Boat Ride Adventure Plot Five Pack. £12.95, almost £13, wasn't it? Five pence away. I don't know, oh my goodness me, it's something not really that common on Flip Out Toys. It's pretty much interesting though, you get these um, very weird Chinese coloured, like, um, same with the Spanish flag there, it's got those Chinese coloured um, faces there on the Flip Out logo, which look like Ash Ketchum. It's also got the Chinese character for Cow. Open me, please. Okay, looks very, very Asian stylish. Uh, very stylish looking in its Asian the form, specifically Chinese. There's the back of the packaging there. Okay, we've got like a sandpan boat, we've got a golden nugget, we've also got an ox and a rat. That looks like ratata. Sorry, ratata. Didn't say 
the, um, I didn't actually say the letter T um, perfectly there, but um, there you go, Latata. And we've also got a Chinese dragon in the middle there with a lantern with, wow, what well, it looks like to be a lantern with a Chinese cow character, I believe, there. And um, my goodness me, I can see a couple of coronaviruses. It looks like I'm seeing four coronaviruses. <laughs> That's very weird, eh? It, it literally is the pot now. And I'm just glad I'm just going to unpack this visibly. But I'm actually going to show you the products um, while I'm holding stuff because it's a little bit more easier without even dropping stuff along the way there. Anyways, I'm going to show you the Chinese dragon first, which looks like this. It's blue. It's also green as well. Bluish green or teal looking, if you ask me. I mean, look at the scales. The scales looks pretty much nice in terms of its details, I believe, though. And also, if I look at the back of the packaging even more, though, look at this. The rat is pretty much the COVID-19 pandemic sort of thing, though, because look what it says here. One rat as a plot for the COVID-19 pandemic. It makes total sense. <laughs> and also, it's pretty much part of the Chinese Zodiac story, I believe, though. And, um, oh wow, this dragon here has got yellow eyes. It's got a mouth sort of detailing like so. It's got barbels or whiskers at the front, which, to be quite obviously honest, are not as long as what I expected in the packaging, or from the packaging. But to be quite obviously honest, the detailing looks very remin reminiscent to that of, well, let's just say, old pottery. Whenever I think of the blues and the tealish, greenish looking colours here, if it looks pretty much nice looking in design very very nice and um it's also female looking as well though she looks quite nice though maybe if it's male or female i'm pretty sure it, it could be female let me just have a look here yeah, it does look a little female because I'm pretty sure it's got eyelashes on the on the eye i believe they <laughs> very weird eh but uh, anyways here's this little sandpan boat pretty much a Chinese Malaysian looking boat there. It's got Chinese characters on each side like that. Someone can decipher for that one for me please. It would be very nice, wouldn't it? But there's obviously these ones there, er, e, er, e, I think those ones there of the lines in there are pretty much Chinese characters. I think they're like Chinese characters for numbers I believe they. And there's the other side here as well. Looks pretty good if you ask me. Okay. It's not the worst of the worst of the products, and I definitely say it's one of the best of the best of all flip-flop products. And whenever I come back to this dragon here, I don't think I've been making any flip-flop products. I've been relaying the dragons for quite a long time now, because I must have been focusing on the real animals, though, along the way, though. And alongside this product, you get, like, a cow or an ox, which, in a sense, it makes sense, because this year is, of course, the year of the ox. Well, obviously, last year was a bad rat though, so that's why I added a rat though, because of the COVID-19 plot. And uh, it's got a blue tail, it's got a couple of blue hooves, there's four of them actually, and a very chocolatey, sort of brownish looking nose. And very nice looking face, with those beady looking eyes. And I've got a funny feeling, it doesn't look too bad. Also, the tail looks quite nice. Uh, it looks... Very, very nice actually, that cow, or ox. I'm going to call it, if you don't know what an ox is, it's basically a bull which has been castrated. And um, here's the rat, that looks like Rattata! Finally got the Pokemon impression, eh? And there's not much licensing, I think it's pretty sad with flip up toys like that these days, there's no licensing info, which is pretty disappointing though. But um, yeah, nevertheless, it's still quite a nice product though. And uh, there's also one thing I forgot to mention or show you here. It looks like, oh, is that a Sicy? Almost looks like a sombrero or an origami boat. But it's actually a golden nugget that they used to be, um, I'm pretty sure they used to use it as money in China. I think people used to make money like this, which is pretty much what old currency in China used to look like though. Very, very nice. And um, obviously, just because it's yellow doesn't mean it's, it is exactly yellow. It's not really that all yellow, but it does look yellow. But if you look closer, there's not much yellow detail in there. I might be totally and utterly wrong though, but um, it's still quite nice actually. And it uh, really does look very, very nice though, obviously though. And um, yeah, it's not too bad for a product like that. 
and um, it's quite a very nice looking five pack though, uh, but it's not as cheap as one of the other products I must have been doing before this last week, and I think what I'm going to show you is something pretty in pink, let me show you the next product which looks like this, it is of course a Valentine's Day product and it's called Love at First Sight at the Wetland Set, which costs about £7.95. There is, of course, the back of the packaging, which looks like that. Okay, it comes with a couple of swans, there's two of them, and there's a couple of fish, there's two of them as well. It's part of the British Wildlife Collection and Toy Range, like every British themed, British Wildlife themed toy is like. And it also comes with a heart shaped lily pad with a Valentine's Day greeting on it, though. And the swans are also caught shipping and flirting like they are in the packaging, though. Happy Valentine's Day! Well, I don't know if I have to say. Something like that. Oh, hang on, this product does cost about £7.95. I've got a funny thing here, this product is way more cheaper, it's pretty much £5 cheaper than the um, new product, which is interesting. Ooh, I'll take a look at these later on, and I think I've just dropped a heart. Here's the fish here, I think this one here is a male. Okay, it looks quite cool. It's got some chevron details and scales for the fish, which looks Pretty obvious actually though, but it looks quite nice, got some hearts in his eyes. Yeah, he looks stunning. I uh, also knows that the head design on the face and the head shape on the fish is pretty much a bit I just say it's quite slim or pretty much trimmed or shortened looking I believe though. Here's the female fish here, which looks like that. Okay. Uh, same detailing but except for the fact that the female, she's also got lipstick detailing as well though. Obviously, she looks pretty looking, obviously, with that lip detailing and design. And here are the swans, though. This one here is a pen. Obviously, the way to tell that if it is a pen, it's a female mute swan. It's also got brown eyes as well. I'm not sure if you can see that. And, um, yeah, it looks pretty nice, actually, though, that swan. Here's the other side of it, of course. It's just the same detailing. And, um, yeah. Also, I can see her eyelashes there, and her brown eyes as well. And there's, of course, our male mute swan here. He looks stunning as well. And he also is also known, I'm pretty sure he's also known as a cob. Obviously, that's what a mute swan is often called if they're male, or any swan which is male is called a cob. And um, there's the name, like so, and the name, male mute swan. Just the same detailing, but except for the fact that there's no eyelashes here. Actually, whenever I think of mute swans in reality, in re I think, if I remember, the mute swan, apart from the fact it's a lot more heavier than the female, the males are pretty much a lot more heavier than well, what the females are supposed to be, though. And I got a funny feeling that male mute swans have actually got much more of a much more pronounced black knob on the middle, next to the head, and also the beak. And let me just show you the hearts that I've actually dropped on the floor. I'm actually using my foot, because if I did, you know, if I did show you my hand, well, I don't know about you, but I'm just too clever, because obviously I just feel like I want this video to be perfect in my opinion there. There it is there, that's the heart. And it also has like a Valentine's Day greeting here, but before we can get into the greeting, oh, I just saw it just now though, Look at the way the heart has been detailed. It's detailed after a lily pad, but it's also got some hearts on each side, two big ones. There's a big one in the middle there, and there's a small one on the top middle there, and on the bottom middle there is a small heart. And yes, it comes in different shades of red or pink. Obviously pink is more of a, I guess say, a lighter shade of red there, and a much more girly one. Happy Valentine's Day! It's got some leaf detailing there, and it's also got a very, very romantic looking font. If you know what I'm saying here. Yeah, it's also got a trio of small hearts. There's also very weird looking hearts there, which look like that day. Very similar to what I saw earlier on. Two big ones on each side. The wings of the heart and whatnot and stuff like that. Looks like a frog's head by the looks of it though. But uh, nevertheless, it looks quite nice though, having like a heart shaped lily pad, which is very, very good to hear. And, um, yeah, that's just pretty much about it, though, hey? And, uh, it does look nice, though. And when you put them on the water, um, it's a lot more attractive. 
uh, a little bit more realistic, if you ask me, right? But our next without putter is nothing special at all. We've got some British Wildlife Collection toys to look at there. And uh, it's this one here. The Flip Flop Origami Flapping Birds British Wildlife Collection, Herring Girl Flock, and Sandy Gobi Fish 12 Pack. And it costs about £16.99, £17. Now, what's up with that British Wildlife Collection toys and Origami Flapping Bird toys? And non origami, I'd say the flip flop origami and non origami toys pretty much expensive these days. Why is it for the fact that even though we're still in this pandemic, that we've got a lot of flip flop toys that are pretty much expensive? Oh well, my goodness me, that herring girl's got some of the most strangest looking legs I've ever seen. It's pretty weird looking. Absurd, isn't it, hey? And that's what the sand gobies would look like. And there's a very cranky and angry looking seagull there. Obviously the herring girls, which is pretty much the proper term for these guys, if they have a silvery grey back and a pair of pink legs. And um, yeah, it looks very, very nice. There's another sand gaby there on the top left. And there's another one in the middle there. And there's also a seagull next to the COVID-19 virus. Or the coronavirus. It's pretty obvious to say it. I'm just going to show you how I'm packed stuff though, because if I didn't, People are just going to be like, I oh, you didn't show us properly though. Anyways, here are the herring girls, which look like this. All of them are adults, as we all know. Nothing particularly special for the fact that, yes, other than the fact that um, they've got clear white heads because they're in breeding plumage. But I'm not sure of the breeding plumage of herring girls. Um, I think, when do they actually start getting their breeding heads? So I would say like um, January or maybe... No, I wouldn't say January, maybe like late January or February, I believe that February is like the time when birds are thinking about, uh, you know, to start breeding by themselves, I would have to say, eh? And also by like February, birds tend to build their nests in order to get ready for themselves in the spring, and I think that's one of the main things about February. They, it's pretty much the time of year that it's pretty much the final month for cold weather and whatnot and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it looks pretty nice though. Okay. Pretty wonky looking wings there, especially those wing tips as well. And um, obviously, we've got six of these. Hopefully, I'm correct here. Um, obviously, the packaging has told me they've obviously got six flapping birds like that there. Now, I've got a funny feeling those birds here, are some flapping here, they're not as that great as I thought of, but. Um, it looks quite nice though, actually, eh? It looks very, very nice. There's the... Oh, sorry. There's the other side here. Flat, flat, flat. And there's what we have here. There we go. My goodness me, it's pretty much the same. I've also noticed that the eyes are pretty much smaller though. I've actually didn't realize... you actually realize this? The eyes have actually gone a bit downsized. So... Wow, I can't believe it. The eyes are pretty much realistically small, so they did this. I've got a funny feeling that the reason why I've made the bird's eyes a lot more smaller is to give it a bit of realism. And the uh, bird's eyes are pretty much small, as I would not expect, though. But um, let me take a look at the gobies, which is nice, I think. Uh, in my opinion, I think maybe in future products there's a better suggestion. If I was going to separate the fish from the birds, perfectly though, honestly I would put them in a very separate packaging and in that way it would be a lot more easier though just to show you the fishies but also the birds themselves nicely. There you go, there's one of the sand gobies here, if I turn it to the other side here, that's what it looks like. Hopefully this camera is on focus mode because sometimes with these models um, they can be designed in, in a pretty sloppy way but sometimes they're not because of the way, well I've obviously treated these models like so. Uh, sometimes I'm the culprit who has been making the wrong things. You know, strangely enough, this one couldn't even focus because of me. Or well, because of the camera, actually, I say. But, um, uh, oh wow. There's the other side of here, the other sand gobby fishes here. Again, it looks quite nice though. And uh, whenever I think of sand gobies, they're the sort of fishies that remind me of mud skippers. Yeah, for the fact that they're pretty much like they've got like the same head designs and stuff like that one, eh? Oh my goodness, man. 
Now, obviously, these fishies are not that edible, those sand gobies, though, but, um, yeah, look, they look pretty nice, though. Actually, if I remember, on Saturday, I must have had sea bream. Or is it, um, the red porgy? I think, um, sea breams are also known as porgies. I might try and make, um, a sea bream thing product, though, one day, eh? I'll be very, very nice, actually, though, eh? And that's what it looks like on the other side. A bit rough and ready on the way it's been made. Maybe it's been caused by the freaking super glue, I have to say, hey? Or PVA glue, or epoxy glue. And, um, good news is, is that I've got some more supplies of PVA glue. Although we're in lockdown, uh, I definitely say it's very therapeutic and essential for people who want to kill the boredom of lockdown. Although, well, it's not really that essential. It's actually only things like that, though, hey? Anyways, that's that. Next photo here. Oh, yes. It's the... Oh, Mallard and Tufted Dark um, Resident Feeding Flock Top Pack. £16.95. And at the back of the packaging here, it comes with uh, a fish, a common frog, and some diving beetles. And it actually comes with a diving beetle. There's only one of them. It's based on a lesser diving beetle. And uh, six flapping birds based on ducks. Oh wow, look at that. Oh yes, I can tell straight forward. This is very reminiscent of what we've got for late winter, maybe mid winter or late winter to springtime. The ducks are pretty much, how would you say it, uh, they're pretty much starting to get into their pre breeding behavior now. Looks like obviously males are chasing each other and they're chasing for a female because obviously. Well, the behaviour of a male marlite is very interesting. Well, males often go for the females, they easily do. And they often compete with each other for the fact they want to be, well, obviously the best mate ever, though. And obviously it's the much more better males, which have a much, much better chance at surviving while breeding. Maybe I'm not that right, though. But, um, anyways, I'm just going to unpack what we have right now. Okay, I think I've got the flapping birds out, which is very, very nice. We've got, this one here is a male tufted duck, because obviously it's purple with a grey beak. It looks like I haven't seen any tufted ducks for quite a long time now. Obviously the last time I've seen these was way, I would just say, I would probably think it's way before Christmas time, I believe, though. It's a male tufted duck. And it's obviously the same bird I've covered in that vlogging video that I did there, which was very, very nice. And, um, yeah, I love that flapping action here, eh? There's the other side, male tufted duck here. It's quite funny, these birds are becoming pretty common now. But the fact that tufted ducks are pretty much like the sort of bird that, the sort of duck that I also see a lot though, more so as the mallard. This one here is another, uh, tufted duck. It's a female. She looks quite nice. She's got yellow eyes. Obviously, she's almost like a mallard, though, but um, much smaller. There you go, female tufted duck. There's the name here. Okay, and um, I can notice that the feet, that the female's feet isn't actually coloured in, which is very strange here, eh? Right? Might have to go ahead and grab, like, a pencil to get the colour of the feet of the female tufted duck to make it a bit more correct, I have to say, eh? It's, um, it's not really that right there, actually, there is that side there, and there's the other side. Okay, looks quite nice. I might show you the male mallard, so here we go. I think I just saw two male or female. Actually, I've seen one male mallard and one female mallard flying with each other though because well it's nearly the breeding season obviously they and obviously in the breeding season a lot of birds start to get aggressive to each other and become extremely territorial and uh, here we are, there's a male mallard there we go got those um, blue speculums on each side of the wings there here's another male mallard obviously the same looking bird though but I don't know if it looks different though same colour of the wings here. It feels like I'm not getting that much brown there, eh? Yeah? It's very, very nice looking. Very, very good looking, I have to say. Eh? And we've also got the female. It's pretty much the same, isn't it, eh, with these ducks? Very similar. Oh, there you go. 
And um, there we go, yeah, that's what it looks like. Female mallard. Obviously, I used to remember the, these birds. I think that's a hen. And these these guys here are the drakes. If I remember easily, they. Anyways, I'm just going to take a look at the little critters that they come with. And let's put it comes with the single we have. Ooh, yes. Actually, again, we're getting quite a lot of diving beetles here. Oh wait, there's four diving beetles, sorry. Sorry, I thought we were getting one diving beetle, but we we're actually getting four, sorry. That was a bad day. Couldn't even remember stuff like that easily, day. There you go, there's our frog, which obviously is a common frog. And uh, these guys are pretty much um, active during like late February or like spring time to like until like the winter or autumn time, I'd say like November or October. That's when they hibernate. Pretty much the frog is basically the hedgehog of the pond because obviously they get away at spring and they hibernate during the autumn and winter. They also get hyperactive during the summer as well though. And uh, very nice looking eye detailings like so. Yellow as well with the underside like so. Here's one of the fishies which looks like that. I don't know what fish it is but I bet you is it. Let me just take a look at the back of the packaging there. Oh, it's based on the tench, so. Looks quite nice, eh? Uh, but I don't know if I'm getting it uh, right there. Let me just show it closer there. Mm, okay, so it looks quite good. Here's the other side here. And, um. That's not much to say here, other than the fact that the camera is not doing very well here. Not doing very well there, Mr. Camera! And, uh, it looks like it's all. Looks like it's smothered. And uh, I've got a funny feeling with all that detail out of that. Uh, it makes it pretty hard though for the for the camera to make the fish look like it's been exposed easily. Though. If I put it down, and maybe if I if I show it to you carefully, the uh, face is not really that easy to see. Sorry, guys, I can't even show it to you that properly though. But um, it does have an eye on the other side. But um, nevertheless. These guys are pretty much fantastic, eh? Huh? And it feels like we're getting a lot more water toys than before, which is quite interesting, eh? Very interesting, I don't know what to say, but we're getting loads and loads of two type toys which are 100% compatible with water, which is um, very, very nice. And, um, wow, we are, eh? we're getting loads and loads of two type toys like that, though. Very, very amazing. Very amazing. And our next. Look at that it here. Uh, I might show you to one of these. Uh, I'll show you. Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm saying here, but I might show you one of these. Um, look at products. There's actually an error on one of them. Look at products here. And uh, I might show you to you. Right now, it's this product here. It's the Fickle Origami British Wallet Collection Top to Duck Family and Ducklings 12 pound, which costs about £11.99 or £12. There you go, there's some ducklings here, it looks like it's this one here is crying, oh my goodness we are, oh, I feel so bad for this one here, eh? And there's another duckling with the coronavirus in the top left. Oh, goodness me, there's quite a lot of tough to ducklings here, I must have seen... Uh, my goodness me, I must have seen a handful of amounts of these at Earthwood Lakes in the summer of last year. Which was a very, very nice looking trip. And uh, this product here is of course 100% compatible with water. And I've actually forgot it to put it on the packaging before I made this video, so that was me being a total Oh my goodness me, a total clumsy looking boy. I was pretty much a very cumbersome looking dude though, just to do this put it here. I was a bit lazy though. There you go. One of sink compatible water. A couple of ducks there, both the male and the female, almost the ducklings, didn't I? And there's ten ducklings, and of course yes, they're based on tufted ducks. One male, one female. Very nice. Let me just go ahead and unpack this. Oh, my goodness me, it feels like during lockdown, it feels like we're getting a whole bunch of water thing toys, which is very crazy day. And, before I can work out, uh, there's not many pigeon products, I don't think I've reviewed any pigeon products, um, this whole year there, I might, I might try and go ahead and make one of the largest pigeon flocks I might have ever there because pigeons are pretty much everywhere there uh, this one is a female tufted duck hopefully the trains aren't going to drain their batteries out there 
And I'd say, I think whenever I think of a female tufted duck, they've also got like a very white knob at the front though, like a swan though, but they're ducks obviously they. And uh, there's the male tufted duck, which looks like this, I'd say, okay. And um, yes, what we all know about male tufted ducks is that they've got a white underside, like so in the middle there. And oh, very distinctive tuft, very distinctive purple looking tuft. But it's not even coloured in with grey in it though, to be a bit realistic though. But nevertheless, he looks quite nice indeed. With those nice looking yellow eyes here and the white beak. It's not really that expression or that duck, sadly. And here are the ducklings that came in the set. And what's quite funny about these ducklings is, is that they're actually lighter than the other ducklings I did in the previous video back in the... When was this? In the summer? I believe it was in the summer. I think it was 2020. My goodness me, it really is bringing back memories though, eh? It really is. In fact, bringing back some memories, I suppose, eh? Hopefully when this year's summer comes in, I'll be able to go out and look out for some more opportunities to do. Which will be really, really nice. Maybe a nice trip to Witten Lakes or Brookvale Park or maybe Sandwall Valley at the RSPB Reserve. There's an RSPB Reserve at Sandwall Valley. I've been there, well, I've only been like three times though. I think the first time I've been there was in May of 2018, before that eponymous heat wave that we had in the summer, which was like a Mediterranean style summer. And obviously, because there was not much rain throughout the rest of summer 2018 until like. And the 7th or the 8th of August, when the first rainfall came in, the first major rainfall came in. And um, I'm just glad it's, that this country is now fully hydrated. Well, it looks a bit now because if we didn't have that much rain, if we started to act like Portugal, well, we will have no rain in the summer. And that will be a very, very big bummer along the way, though. Although people could just say otherwise and just complain about the whole bloody British weather that we have at the moment though. Anyways, next buddy is the adult mute swan flock 12 pack. Forgot to erase the lines here. <laughs> uh, but anyways, it costs about £14.95, but that's five pence away. £15. And I got a funny feeling I've made swan products like this before. But um, what's quite different about this product is is if you look at the back of the packaging here, there's no water right on the underneath section of the packaging there where the loss of the info is. Uh, the heads are pretty much, I think the packaging tells me that the heads are pretty much semi-realistic looking. Um, the, the eyes are anime and manga like, which is pretty interesting. But the fact that these birds are obviously based on Swanna, the white bird Pokemon, and the evolved form of duck that. Well, I've got a funny feeling these guys might be more common as wing girls, I believe, though, maybe even more so as far fetches. My goodness, we. Wow! Oh my goodness, we. That is pretty amazing now, getting a whole, a whole ton of swans here. And uh, what's quite funny is, is that one of them doesn't say mute swan. If I look at this one here, this one doesn't have a name though, which is very disappointing though. So, I'll have to go ahead and. Well, just. Basically, ponder around, no pun intended, on one of these boxes and just write the word Mute Swan. Because, well, I can be pretty much forgetful sometimes. And, um, let's see what we have. Go up to the name Mute Swan perfectly. Yes. There you go. That's pretty nice. Also, noticing there's a very huge difference here. The beak is a bit more different there. And I've also noticed that. The eyes are pretty much visibly brown, which is very interesting there. Eh? Obviously the heads are not obviously the same there, eh? but um, yeah. Looks very, very nice indeed. Same with this one here. And I've actually got a funny feeling that um, these guys here look very nicely detailed. Very nicely detailed for the fact that, um, yeah. Very, very nice indeed. And um, here's the other one there. Trying to... I mean, I'm just going to show you all the swans here because, well, obviously not all of the swipes are completely fully white. Some of them have got like little particles of orange and brown and whatnot, all the other colours and stuff like that though, that I have at the moment though. But um, yeah, I think these guys, they're not too bad. In fact, I might make 
batches of swans. That would be really, really awesome here. I don't have to show all of them one by one. I can just show you all of them like so. Okay, we'll just... Oh, <laughs> I've just dropped one swan here. That wasn't very nice of me. And actually, yes, it does look pretty nice though. The heads are well, obviously semi-realistic looking though, which is nice to hear about. Because obviously, if you look back in my previous swan videos I did, well, the previous photos I did though, um, they're pretty much different. Kind of funny feeling that their beaks are pretty much deformed, but in a much more realistic way. To be shaped realistically, obviously. And um, obviously, it's all about repacking the birds properly now. And um, it's kind of a funny feeling that these birds are pretty heavy in reality, obviously, they. One of the heaviest flying birds on Earth, though, the fifth heaviest flying birds in the world. Very really amazing, these guys. And these ones aren't that migratory. They're not really of a migrant bird. They're just pretty much residents here, perfectly living here. Okay, and here's our next putter here. This one here is a... Oh, it's a lesser blackback doll with migrating and fishing out to sea. Fishing... Sorry, feeding frenzy. 12-pack. Why do I get... The words mixed up sometimes. Fifteen pounds ninety-nine. Well, that's sixteen pounds. And there's the back of the packaging here. Pretty much cheaper than the herring gulls with the sand gobies on it there. That looks like a cod to me though, but it's both a haddock. Very interesting. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Okay, that is like so. Goodness me, it looks pretty much amazing. I've actually got a, another lesser blackback gull product to look at though. Which is pretty much amazing though. Once again, I'm just showing you the birds first before I have to take a look at the fishies here first. Ooh, oh no. Looks like this one here needs to go back and do some working and stuff. But I don't know, it needs to go back to work now because it looks, it looks like it's missing its eyes. But don't worry, I can do this one in a nickel of time because obviously, um, hopefully, I didn't say anything racist though, but um, I'm just going to. We work on the head though because obviously um, one of the lesser black back girls I've just shown you um, it didn't have an eye on it though uh, so I'm just going to place an eye on that bird here so I'm just going to do it very quickly here like so and um, yes let's see what it looks like oh nice indeed does it have a name? Oh no, it doesn't have a name! Oh my goodness me, why am I being pretty much... Oh my goodness me, I must have been rushing at this product here. Oh silly Ivan, what was I thinking, eh? So it's like, with so many errors on fifth lap products these days... Oh my goodness me. I, I could tell you what, uh, it's going to extend the video even more, but I am not giving myself up though. As I've got a funny feeling, eh? Uh, we've got about, oh, it's about three more pizza products to do. How does the name look? Okay, it looks very, very nice, hey? Right? And we've got some more of these guys here. Pretty much the same looking birds. Once again, they've got the same deformed, realistic art looking eyes though, that they have now. You know, it's pretty much um, the realistic norm of these birds here. Ooh. That's pretty almost realistic looking here, eh? And then uh, there's the other one there as well. Nothing too particularly um, special about these birds, other than the fact that these guys are... In fact, if I remember these guys first occurred in the West Midlands as a wintering bird, around in the 50s, because Birmingham was an inland place, but then somewhere like in the 80s, the 1980s, I'd say like 1986 or 1989, these birds first bred in the West Midlands along with some herring gulls, which actually, if I remember that herring gulls actually came in small numbers to breed here than the lesser blackback gulls, which actually had much more bigger numbers than what we have with the herring gulls, which are the much more familiar seabirds. I think lesser blackback gulls are often confusing there sometimes here, right? Actually, we do have other critters apart from haddock. Uh, which look like this. Um, obviously, I didn't show you what was also inside here. And um, hopefully, the train batteries aren't going to be flashing up. Oh, sorry, I've just dropped. What's up with me just dropping 
some of the other components that I have in one product there. It's just, it's just completely and utterly um, silly, isn't it, eh? Having me just dropping items from products that I've got here at the moment, though. And uh, I believe this is a haddock. And uh, my feet are aching here because I've been standing there just doing this toy view. Sometimes, whenever I'm feeling the pain, it can be highly tedious sometimes here. This one here. Some of these fishies, I believe, uh, don't think I've got visible looking fishies. They have fishy faces, obviously, that's what I was about to say here. And we've got a couple of lobsters. This one here looks, actually, this one is a shrimp, sorry. Very different crustaceans here, eh? This one here is a shrimp, which looks like this. And we've also got a lobster. I believe it's a Norwegian lobster. A Norway lobster, I believe, they. And uh, it looks like that. And there's the other side here. Very interesting. And we've also got a flatfish, which looks like Stunfisk. The Pokemon I used to have. In fact, it's a much more smaller version of Stunfish. Yes, yeah, sorry, Stunfisk, sorry. Than the Advent Calendar one, if I remember that. That was pretty much memorable, obviously, though. Sorry, I'm pretty much speaking pretty much in a very rough and ready way there, because I, well, I can't speak that well, and, um,. I do have a bit of trouble speaking now. Sometimes I sort of get dyslexia though when I'm doing videos like this, but um, hopefully not this time. Oh, sorry! Well, it looks like one of the seagulls have taken a dive. And uh, I'm just going to put them back in the respective packaging. As I like say, so. I imagine I might show you via video here. There you go. Oh, wow, I didn't realise there's a very nice illustration of a shrimp next to the coronavirus and yes because of the COVID-19 pandemic obviously the coronavirus is here to stay got a couple of more flip flap origami seagull products oh I wonder what this one here it's a herring girl family versus lesser spotted dogfish shog shivering shoal 12 pack 17 pounds 95 5 pence away 18 pounds makes sense that a group of sharks is not just called a shoal but also a shiver of sharks and uh, that's what a lesser spotted dog fish would look like there. It's got some leopard stripes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Leopard spots, sorry. Is it striking looking? Leopard spotted. It's obviously, they're quite nice day. And uh, we've got a couple of juvenile herring girls. There's one here on the left, and there's the other one there on the right. Stri leopard striking looking spots. Those are quite nice. Oh my goodness, that's a cranky and angry looking herring girl. Didn't have time to put the other ones here, but I'm just gonna just only gonna take out the birds here first, just as I've always have been doing now. There's one more here, and um, this one here is a juvenile, I think. That's juvenile. Yes, it is. It is a juvenile. When you look at it, of course. And to me, it looks quite nice. I love the flapping action on this bird here. Yeah, but that looks very, very nice. Very nice indeed. And let's take a look at the second winter herring girl. Now, the difference, as I can tell straightforward, is not just the eye, but also the beak at the front. Yes, we've got a little slightish grayish, blackish knob at the front there, but we've also got a streaking of pink as well though. This looks pretty interesting. And um, also noticing that the hump is silvery grey, which is pretty much like the stage where it goes into adulthood. Also got another, another juvenile here as well. Same, same. Very, very nice indeed. And we've also got another second winter. Obviously, we've got two of these second winter herring girls. And this one here is a. Obviously, it's the same details like that and that bird. Imagine that these birds were rings. Well, well, I, I wouldn't suggest. You know, making origami seagulls with rings on them, or a swan with rings, because obviously, um, well, if a bird has got a ring, it couldn't even stand it because it could literally agonise them, though, with pain. But anyways, there's the other herring girl here. Uh, I couldn't even tell which one's male or female because it's funny. I rarely ever put the eyelashes on herring girls just to make themselves female, though. But um, yeah. Yeah, both of them obviously look very, very nice and um, I couldn't even tell which one's male or female but I'm just going to show you the 
dogfish dykes. Obviously, the specific name of these species is called the lesser spotted dogfish. I think I've seen these before at the Sea Loft Centre, which is like one of the bigger aquariums in Birmingham. Do I have any more? Nope, I think that's about it. Makes me think of Finding Nemo or Finding Dory you know, whenever I'm at the aquarium there. There you go. And uh, there's the other side here. Uh, I'm not sure if I could show it to you carefully there, because obviously it's the camera. It's literally doing It's got a very weird looking alien looking eye. There's the other one there. I don't know how clear it is. Looks pretty much, it looks like some weird spaceship thingy. And obviously just because it's a shark doesn't exactly mean it's about to attack you. And um, looks like I've got a very upside down looking less than spotted dogfish. And oh, that's a very weird looking eye though, very alien looking. It doesn't have any mouth detailing though, but uh, they look very, very nice though. And um, there's another one of these, and it uh, looks quite nice. And there's another one here. Obviously, we've got very visible looking spots here which aren't black but just greyish looking. Once again, there's a very nice ID tunnel here which looks really, really cool. And that one there, once again, exhibiting the same ID tunnel what we've got here as, as well. And that nice looking alien looking. Um, I just say membranes that they have there, very interesting looking alien like eye designs. And uh, there you go, I'm just gonna put them back to where they belong in this product here, I believe. There you go, that's that done. Okay, let's move on to once again, let's look like that girls because I got a funny feeling I'm just still tackling on the largest seagull species because obviously these guys are going to be breeding sooner or later though hopefully from March or by mid to late February when they start making a huge raucous through the city and the coast this one is the lesser flatback gulls ooh at paddy tuttle mat flats um, I wonder what this says, beach I think it says with beach tour pack 14 pounds 95 5 pence away 15 pounds the back of the packaging looks like that. We've also got the same lobsters as what we had from the 12 pack, but they're much smaller in size. I'm just going to unpack all what we have. And uh, hopefully, once again, just the same idea just keep the small critters inside and just showcase the birds of what we have first. Okay, once again, wonder what this is here. Oh, it's a second winter lesser black bat gull. That she knows that the young gulls are very, very difficult to tell whether it's a herring or a lesser black bat. But with these models, obviously the lesser blackback girls are gonna just gonna keep the brownish sort of hump detailing, and whereas the herring girls are just gonna develop like a silvery greyish sort of back, obviously though. And um, yeah, it looks very, very nice actually though. Didn't I remember that some of these guys have to have like you know, you know, just whitish tail detailing designs with a blackish looking tail, like the black tailed girls of Japan. And East Asia, black-tailed gulls, you know, the seagulls that make this sort of sound that sounds like a meowing cat or a, or a crying baby or... Uh, I remember these species of seagulls there, but I don't think I've seen them before because I've never been to Kaboshima in Japan, which is located in Amoi, I believe there. This one here is a sub-adult sub lesser black-backed gull. And also, look at the wings there. The wings are pretty much... well. They've got a very interesting colour combination of brown and grey. Very interesting colours though. And there's a um, slightish grey looking hump here, or how do you say it? Body, I believe they. The middle section. Or back, I believe they. And um, there's the other one here as well. There's the other sub adult with the brownish tail at the back there. On its way to transitional period there, transition itself from sub-adult to adult, as the adult lists up like that girl, hopefully we're going to have visible looking eyes here, can I show its face, yes indeed, maybe I should have done close up on each bird though, just to see the heads perfectly though, yep they've got the name like that, and we'll take a look at the other one here next, and uh, is it the same, yes it's the bloom insane, there you go, you've got the same name here on this bird here, ready though? Right, time to take a look at the smaller critters. We've got mackerel and lobsters. 
of time. I'm going to show you the photos now. I'm just going to show you all of them. All of my hands don't. Hope they've got all of me. Oh no! Looks like the mackerel has taken a dive. I can pick up with my feet or foot. And I might show you what it looks like. There you go. That's what a mackerel looks like. Actually, at mackerel yesterday and Saturday, I believe. I believe Saturday was like the worst day ever there because I didn't do anything exciting there other than the fact that I was doing products day. Yeah, I've also been watching a knockoff of the Sonic movie there. I have actually watched. So, you know, I've been watching some sort of weird generic Sonic knockoff film, I believe they. Uh, I must have been thinking, was it called Hedgehogs? I've actually just watched a movie just simply called Hedgehogs, and um, mind you, that almost got me arrested. I almost felt guilty about that because I was watching like a very unlicensed Sonic movie, which actually didn't had a character, which had a character that looked like Sonic. It was a blue hedgehog named Bobby, but it didn't have anything else for any Sonic day. And it also starred like Smosh actors and presenters and blah blah, and also added like, it also had like, um, Gen X, who was this? Jennifer McAllister, I believe. I believe it was, she's like a, a famous YouTuber, I believe they. That's a lobster, I believe, I believe they. It's got small looking eyes. Sorry, I didn't know what subject I was speaking here, but I was speaking about Jen McAllister. She was also another great uh, voice actor in that knockoff Sonic movie, which was called Hedgehogs, way before the Sonic movie was released this year. And um, yeah, pretty much nice looking indeed. I actually think these toys are pretty much nicely detailed on the way they've been designed. And I also look at the back of the packaging, which also looks like that. Though. There's a very curious looking adult seagull next to a. Is that a first winter or is it a juvenile? I believe that's a juvenile, is it? Oh, sorry. Wait, it's second winter because I can see a bit of pink. A bit of a pinkish sort of detailing on the, on the beaks there. Maybe I could have called them rostrums or mandibles. The amazing thing, I had fish and chips recently this lunch. Today. Obviously that's just kept the seagulls at bay. And I must have made myself just kept myself at bay though. Obviously though. And if I, but if I did sit outside and just had a bit of fun with my fish and chips to feed the seagulls, well, that wouldn't be right. Because we all need food to stay alive. Last but not least, is this it here. It's a wintering black-headed gull, ice fishing feeding frenzy, twelve pounds, seventeen pounds. Oh my goodness me, seventeen pounds ninety-five, five pence of weight, eighteen pounds. Very amazing. We're getting a lot of. Pence ninety five pounds ninety five products there. There's the back of the packaging here. We've got a perch, which is a fish that looks like that, and we've got a couple of black headed gulls. And um, on this section here, actually there's some perches here. Four perches on that part of this packaging, and there's two of them right here, like so, with three more seagulls. Which is okay, and there's one at the other me please section next to the coronavirus. Anyways, I'm just gonna go ahead and unpack this and see what we have. And because I feel like that this video is nearly coming to the end here, I don't know if I should move away though, but uh, hopefully we've got all six birds here. Yep, that looks perfect indeed. Okay, so this is of course our black headed girl, which looks like this. You know, it's funny, whenever I take a look at these birds here, uh, I don't know what to say about you, but I think whenever I look at these guys, uh, they're actually very common, like, you know, around, like, July, October, sorry, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, and March. It's funny, you rarely ever see them throughout, like, April, May, and June, I have to say, um, that, um, yeah, that these guys are normally... Uh, commonly sighted at their colonies, um, which is pretty much the thing you have to, you know, you have to go there and just see them. And uh, obviously, some of these places when you go to black-headed gull colonies, it's either an inland or there's wetlands and stuff like that, and um, and um, ponds and lakes and lagoons and other things like that. There, actually, a lagoon is like a lake next to the coast. And, um, yeah, pretty amazing, eh? Uh, obviously, these guys are either uh, pretty much uh, a breeder 
at the coast or at the wetlands, or most of the time, or if not all of the time, they're winter visitors. Very amazing, eh? Very, very nice. Okay, I don't know if I'm actually going to be making more black-headed gold products. I think the main thing is, is that whenever I make black-headed gold products, I often tend to hear the sound of why I make the birds. Very interesting, eh? Very interesting indeed. I'm just going to show you what they look like, the um, perches. And uh, they look very, very similar to the... Uh, oh, that looks pretty upside down. Uh, to the American purchase that I did in uh, August of 2020 because I was focusing on America and things like that there. You know, the semi-arid areas of America and whatnot. I've got, like, yellow-looking eyes there. Very, very nice. And here's the other side here. We've got red findy tunnels, also yellow tarotty tunnels as well, which is very, very good as I can work out there. And I'm just glad as I've done some homeschooling quickly there, I feel like I'm doing pretty much very well there. Sorry I couldn't do any close-ups of that well, right? But um looks pretty nice when I'm doing toy views like this one here, right? Got a funny feeling that looks like a very nice looking model. That fish, okay, so here's the other side there. And um yeah, very very interesting there. And we've also got two more. Um, yeah, it's got a very visible, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's a very visible looking face, man, eh, oh wow, can't believe it, I almost thought it was pretty visible, well, it was visible right now, but now the camera's gone a bit sloppy, oh, it's coming back to, into close-up mode, which is nice to hear, there you go, very, very nice, these handling indeed, I really love the way these guys are being detailed so well, I don't think I've seen you know, schools of perches before though, but they look really, really nice. Well, go on, tell you what, guys, I think that's about it in this toy view. Hopefully you enjoy, if you really is, oh my goodness, no, I didn't know what to say here. If you really have enjoyed this video here, just go ahead and please give this video a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel while my voice is having a very tedious time at the moment now. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And hopefully these trains have got their batteries still working now. Hopefully they're not drained out. And hopefully everything is all fine and super dandy right now. And as always, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for your time. And I'm very sorry for the delay though. Yet again, bye for now.